Another model released by Garmin. Are they over flooding the market? Is this my next favorite sport watch? Let's find out. Everybody, I'm Yair and welcome to my channel. If you're into sport and tech, you came to the right place. Lately Garmin has created a new series of watches starting with one. Here we have the brand new Garmin 4Runner 165. That should be their lowest tier of the 6 series like 165, 265 and 965. It has some surprising new features as well as some questionable ones. For the full result and discussion, you may click on the chapters down below and skip to the part that interests you the most. We'll start with some specs. The 165 comes in one size, a 43mm case. You can also choose the music or non-music variant. The price difference is 50 US dollars, 250 versus 300 for the music version. You have several colors to choose from. If you choose the non-music variant, it will be either black or white as the one you see here. For the music variant, you can choose between turquoise berry, black or white. It weighs about 39 grams and you don't really feel it on your wrist. It's one of the most comfortable watches I've ever worn. The watch band is an industry standard 20 millimeter quick release, so you will be able to find many alternative watch bands out there. The 4165 has a 43 diameter screen and 1.2 inches of gorgeous display that is visible in any weather conditions. The resolution is 390 by 390 and you'll definitely notice a crispier display than many alternatives out there. The claim battery life is 11 days and in a smartwatch mode and 19 hours of GPS time. All system on plus music should hold up to 6.5 hours, which is plenty enough for most people. From my testing, I can say that I never charged it since I got it about a week ago. I did a daily activity and it still has 36% uh, left. Also, I didn't use the always on display. If you'll choose to do it, it will definitely hurt your battery life. The 4165 has a water rating of 5 ATM, so you can swim with it and anywhere and immerse it in water. Just don't go scuba diving with it. It has a very responsive touchscreen with the familiar five button layout of Garmin. You can choose where and when to turn off or on the touchscreen as you like. The music variant has a four gigabytes of memory to store all of your music apps and widgets. It's not a lot to compare to higher end models, but, but it's plenty enough for some podcast episodes and playlists from Spotify. The watch has the latest uh, Elevate 4 optical heart rate sensor by Garmin that will put to the test and a blood oxygen monitor, barometric altimeter, a compass and accelerometer, a thermometer, and of course GPS sensor, but not with a dual band. The smartwatch feature includes incoming calls and messages that you cannot reply to unless you're an Android user, daily step tracker, sleep tracking, weather forecast, calendar meeting sync, live track, distress button, as long as you have your phone with you, music control, and if you have the music variant, you can also uh, download offline music for some music providers such as Spotify, Amazon Music, and more. Also, for the first time at this price point, it also supports Garmin Pay for contactless payment. The sport profile selection is really good. It includes all types of runs, outdoor and indoor bike, open water and pool swimming, strength training, yoga, pilates, but not triathlon. Unfortunately, it does not have winter sports as well. The 4165 also supports Garmin training plans and you can download your training plan directly from the app. The watch is fully compatible with Garmin Connect IQ, which is like the app store of Garmin where you can download apps, data fields and watch faces to your watch. By the way, you can store up to four data fields in each page. And you can choose a lot of pages, I think about 17, which is uh, more than probably anybody needs. Another neat feature is the daily suggested workouts. You can get suggestions from the watch for running and also uh, you get the suggested of our upcoming event in your uh, training calendar if you put one. A quick notice, if you find this video helpful, don't be shy and hit the like button. Also consider subscribing it means a lot to me and I will appreciate it. You also get the Garmin morning report, which is fully customizable. What it basically does is greeting you each morning with data about your sleep 
and what is expecting you today. It is a very neat feature. It also supports PacePro. If you don't know about PacePro, please click here and check out my video explaining about the PacePro. The watch is very comfortable to wear and so light, as I said before. The sleep monitoring is quite accurate and the watch did recognize the time I went to bed. As you can see in the graph, the deep and light sleep duration and more. You also get a sleep score which will determine the quality of your sleep. The 4165 also measure your heart rate variability to determine how fit you are and ready for performance. The 4165 also includes the basic training load and training status measurement. By utilizing this feature, you can understand your current balance between hard and easy workout and adjust your overall load accordingly. It does not support the full breakdowns like, like in higher end models, but you also get some basic stuff. The Pulse OX feature is also supported and you can choose to monitor your blood oxygen level all day or just on demand. Since it's a wrist-based optical sensor and not a medical grade device, I don't think it's worthwhile to drain your battery significantly for all day tracking. Maybe you can get a glance once in a while. In this section, we will analyze the 4165's performance in various sport activities, including running, cycling, and strength training. Here we will compare an outdoor run using the Garmin 4165 against the Apple Watch Ultra with the Polar Verity Sense. You can see that the Garmin 400 measured 7.33 kilometers while the Apple Watch measured 7.22. You can see in blue the Apple Watch Ultra and in uh, orange the Garmin 400 165. If you look closely you can see that in most cases the Garmin 165 has more straight lines and I do suspect that it means it was less accurate. It tends maybe to uh, beautify the turns a bit. If you look at the 400 165 in orange, it looks like I'm running in the middle of the road and not on the pavement, which is not correct. And also, again, you can see straight lines and very beautiful turns. And I do suspect that the GPS was less accurate. Bear in mind that the Apple Watch Ultra has a dual band frequency GPS and the 400 165 has only one chip of GPS. Let's look at the heart rate data. Um, so the basically the mean, the average, and the max is almost identical. There are some cases that the 4165 measured a higher heart rate. In this case, you can see it measured a much higher, 180 against 170. But you can see that the, when the heart rate went down, it went down here. And you can see that in general, it measured an almost identical heart rate. And I find it very impressive. Here we can see a Zwift a virtual running workout of about seven kilometers using Zwift Stride and Polar Verity Sense, which is much more accurate. You can see that the 4165 using a treadmill really missed about almost two kilometers uh, more. It gave me more kilometers at the same time. Um, but uh, in the end of the run, you can calibrate. I'm not sure how much uh, it will give you if you're just moving around in your gym uh, between uh, several um, uh, treadmills. Maybe it depends uh, how it did measure on this specific treadmill and I was using an incline of 1% and there are more uh, factors to be factored in. So I don't think you can really rely on those kilometers unless you will manually adjust the kilometers in the end of uh, each session. Just take those uh, measurements with a grain of salt. What about heart rate? Again, we see impressive results. Uh, you can see that sometimes it did measure a higher heart rate, but in almost all cases, it looks almost identical. You can rely on your 4165 to measure your heart rate while running on the treadmill, as you can rely on it when you uh, measure it outside. Here we have a measurement of a strength training session. The Apple, the Apple Watch in purple was connected to the Polar Verity Sense. So it looks like uh, the 4165 uh, did catch up, but only after the set was completed. And the peaks that I catch with the Apple Watch was much higher. Uh, the average of the 4165 was 86, while in the Apple Watch it was 91. I don't think it did a great job uh, in strength training. And we do know that there is a problem of uh, wrist-based heart rate monitors to catch up while uh, doing some uh, flexing with the arm uh, in the, when you're doing the strength training. But you 
generally got most of the heart rate out. In this case, I don't think it, it is like the running. We can say that the 4165 missed here and in, if it's important to you, I would use an external HRM. So the 4165 is currently the lowest tier running watch that Garmin has to offer. You get most type of activities, sensors, bird count, navigation, offline music support, suggested workout, pace pro, open water swimming, Garmin pay, and much more goodies. Does all this beat the competition against something like the Corus Pay 3? Yeah, kinda. If you want the best training tools out there, deep analysis of your sleep, health and current fitness, contactless payment support, and offline music, that's your best bet. I do think that excluding triathlon and multi-sport is a strange decision. Also, it doesn't support bike, power meter, indoor trainer, and advanced running dynamics from a compatible device, which is a shame. I think that in the perfect world, this watch and the 265 should have merged since they have too many similarities and the segmentation between the two is a bit artificial. However, the interface is slick, the execution is amazing, and you can't really expect much more from a GPS wearable. Who is it for? I could easily recommend it almost to anyone. It has amazing display, many great features, and a good price. I cannot recommend it to someone looking for bike accessories integration and advanced running dynamics such as triathlete. Besides that, you get everything Garmin has to offer. I honestly think that the competition from companies like Covers made Garmin offer premium features in such a lower price point. I think that Garmin also killed the 55 series and the transflective display altogether. That's all for today. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and also consider subscribing for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and don't forget to train hard and bye.